1999, uh, my mother and I were having a fight. I punched a hole in the wall. She wouldn't let me go to my, the play that was going on that I wasn't in. I said, I'm going. She said, I'm going to call the police. You know, she was very worried that I was going to go nuts. And so I said, fine, call the police. And she said something to the effect of, uh, for the first time since 1985, I wondered why I adopted you. I was crushed. You must have been crushed. I was crushed. A lot of thoughts about, you know, your own family doesn't love you. Nobody's ever going to love you. You know, your own mother gave you away. I mean, that's, that's been a theme throughout my life that my own mother gave me away. When I was 19, um, the year before I attempted suicide, uh, one of my close friends, again, from, from childhood, shot herself. And I felt like if she can do it, why can't I? And it really became a possibility at that point. When Richard Heckler interviewed 50 people who made very serious suicide attempts from which they shouldn't have survived, what he found was that they'd all been in what he called the suicidal trance, where these negative thoughts had taken more and more control over the person's behavior, what we would refer to as the voice. So the person is almost in a possessed state, where the voice, or the anti-self, is directing their behavior. And as you can see in the three people in the film, that's what was happening as well. While they had had negative thoughts prior to this about themselves, as we all do at one time or another, those thoughts were becoming much more intense and much more self-destructive and directing them towards taking actions to actually end their own life, including very baiting thoughts, baiting them to actually take action on their suicidal plans. Go ahead and do it, you coward. So cowardly. You're so cowardly, you can't even do this. So cowardly. Go ahead. You can't do it, can you? You can't even do this. When are you going to do it? You're, when are you going to do it? Come on, when are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? You've got to fi you find a time when there's nobody around. You've got to find a good time when nobody's going to miss you, when you can get away. If someone is becoming more actively suicidal, the thoughts are changing both in intensity and they're also changing in terms of the content. So they're going from thinking mildly self-critical things that we all do at one time or another to more extreme vicious self-hate that leads to a lot of the pain and psychological distress that really propel the person toward making a suicide attempt because these negative thoughts are causing the distress, then the perfect solution to getting out of that distress becomes committing suicide. September 24th rolls around, 2000. I decide this is it. Tomorrow, I'm going to end my life. I was ready to go. I was just gone. It was over. I, I knew what was going to happen. I'm going to go to the bridge. I'm going to jump. It's just that simple. That's it. There's no if, ands, or buts. It's done. I went out to the Golden Gate Bridge. On the bus, I began to cry softly in the back. The bus was packed. On the bus, I began to think, if one person comes up to me and says, are you okay, I'll turn around. If one person comes up to me and tells me, you ask me if anything's wrong, I'll tell them everything. I got out of the parking lot and... I thought, Kevin, turn around, get on the bus again, go back, go back. And then I heard voices, and it was on the bus too, but you must die, you must die. So I walked onto the span. I must have been there 40 minutes. And once again, I thought, one person has to come up to me and say, are you okay? One person, anybody. And a woman was approaching me, and I was like, oh, thank God. Thank you, God. And then the, she had sunglasses on. In an accent, she came up and she said, uh, will you take my picture? Will you take my picture? So I thought, oh, okay, uh, lady, I'm going to kill myself. And, and so I took a picture about five times. And I said, nobody cares, after she left. Turned around, backed up to the railing next to the, next to the roadway, ran and catapulted myself over with my arms, just my arms. My legs didn't touch. And I thought, oh my God, at the split second I hit free fall, I said, I don't want to die. What did I just do? I was wide awake. The voices were gone. I was right there facing ultimate death. 